Now, if you notice, there's something wrong here. Because if we look at this, we always have to hold something constant. So pressure has to be constant, or volume constant, or temperature constant. And that's not the real world. In the real world, we have thing, all three variables moving with each other. So we need to have an equation that we don't have to hold one thing constant, and we actually can factor in all three variables. And what that is, is called the combined gas law. Okay? So if we combine all three laws, we can relate one variable at a time to a set amount of gas. Now notice we're still stuck using a set amount of gas. So we're, we still can't change the amount of gas that we have in here. That's coming up in a future slide also. Okay? So with the combined gas law, we can um, basically set this up so we can just combine all three of the original laws together and then solve for one of the variables that we don't have. Now what that means is, in reality, if you take the pressure of a gas times its volume divided by its temperature, that relationship always is a constant. So we call that C for a constant. Now this is not the equation we're using. It's kind of like the thought process why this equation works. So these three things all work in unison with each other at all times. If you change one, the other two are affected. Okay. So as a result, if you change something, you're always going to get new values or a final value. So we can have a combined law that has P1, V1, T1 equaling P2, V2, T2, where basically we're now taking Boyle's Law, Guy-Lussac's Law, and Charles' Law, and we're combining them into one equation that's usable. Here's the cool thing. If you um, don't want to use Boyle, Charles, and Guy-Lussac's Law, you don't really have to independently because the combined gas law works for all those same type of problems. Now, if you just go back to our sample problems that we had, in the first sample problem, we held constant temperature. So in the first problem, since temperature was constant, that wasn't a factor, meaning that the initial temperature and the final temperature were the same. So in our math, now that we have the combined gas law, we can just take the t's and we actually could cross them out because they're not changing. And if you take the t away from this equation, what's left over? Well, it's Boyle's Law. Okay, so that brings us to our practice problem for the combined gas law. And if we read this problem, it's actually two problems in one. So we have two empty gas cans, both have a volume of 2.5 liters at a pressure of 1.15 atmospheres in the morning when the temperature is 285 Kelvin. So for, for both gas tanks, so that they have the same starting values. However, gas can A is one of those old metal rigid ones that won't flex. Gas can B is one of those new plastic ones that can move and flex a little bit. So at the end of the day, when it's warm, gas can B can actually increase its volume by 0.25 liters. So if you calculate the temperature at the end of the day, when it reaches 330 kelvins, what will the pressures be on the inside of those two different canisters? Okay, so go ahead and tack this problem, uh, solving for each canister, one that the volume changes, one that the volume does not change, and then we'll go through the answer key in a second. Okay, so let's, take, let's tackle this problem now and kind of work it out together. Uh, I've already got our combined gas law on the board. So P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. And I'm going to arrange this because so we're solving for the pressure in both cases. So when we rearrange this, we're solving for our final pressure. So we can say that P1 times V1 times T2 all divided by T1, V2 would equal our ending pressure, okay? So take these three values, multiply each other, divide by those two, that should tell us what our pressure is, uh, making sure that we're in the same units and making sure that we're in Kelvins for temperature, okay? So in scenario one, or can A, we can't change the volume. So in can A, the volumes are the same in both cases. So if this V1 and V2 are the same, they mathematically cancel out of our equation. So what we get for can A, is these cancel out. So really, we're left with just P1 times T2 or T1, or basically you're looking at guy lussacs law, okay? So the initial pressure uh, was 1.15 atmospheres. The initial temperature was 285 Kelvin. Divided by, oops, 
I want T2, so I want the final temperature there. So our final temperature was 330 kelvins. My initial temperature was 285 kelvins. Kelvins cancels, left with atmospheres of pressure, and now we do our mass. So we take the 1.15 times 330 divided by 285, and we get for can A a pressure for can A one point three three atmospheres to three significant figures. Okay? Now can B can flex. So for can B the volume is going to change, so I can't cancel out volume in this scenario. So our pressure initial stays the same, so I still have 1.15 atmospheres. My initial volume is 2.5 liters times my ending temperature, which is 330 kelvins. All of that divided by <clears throat> my starting temperature, which is 285 kelvins, times my second volume. Now, in the problem, it says 0.25 liters, but that's how much it can increase by. So if 2.50 was the initial, it can increase by 0.25. That's 2.50 plus 0.25. So added together is the overall ending volume there in liters. Okay. Calvin's cancels, liters cancel. I'm left with atmospheres. And if we plug this one in, we get a new pressure of 1.21 atmospheres to three significant figures. Okay. So we see because the volume was able to expand, the overall pressure went down a little bit which would make sense because if when volume goes up, pressure has to go down between that, in that relationship. So between those two cans, if we go back to our screen, the rigid can would be 1.33 atmospheres and the smaller can would be 1.21 atmospheres. Okay, for the remaining time, you are to work on worksheet number one. Worksheet number one has a combination of Boyles, Charles, Guy Lussacs, and the combined gas law uh, as practice for you guys on that. Uh, answer keys are posted online for you also. So work on worksheet number one for the rest of the time. Thank you.